everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to focus on the anatomy of the biliary system and understand pathologies associated with it. We will also solve questions to make it more interesting. This is what the biliary system looks like. If you want to test your basic anatomy, you can pause this video and try to label these parts. If you're learning this for the first time, continue watching as I walk you through every step. This is the liver. The term hepatic is always associated with the liver. So, this is the right hepatic duct and this is the left hepatic duct. The right and left hepatic ducts combine to give rise to the common hepatic duct. The dark green structure here is the gallbladder and this is the cystic duct. The common hepatic duct and the cystic duct comes together to form the common bile duct. This is the pancreas, so it isn't hard to figure out that this dark green structure here is the pancreatic duct. The common bile duct and pancreatic duct opens into the duodenum. The opening has a sphincter known as sphincter of Audi. Now that we've understood the structures, let's dive into our first question. Question number one. Bile is produced in the liver or gallbladder. Bile is produced in the liver. However, it is concentrated and stored in the gallbladder. Question number two. The hormone which stimulates the release of bile from the gallbladder is produced by option A, liver, option B, gallbladder, option C, duodenum, option D, pituitary. The answer to this question is duodenum. Whenever there is fatty food in the duodenum, it releases cholecystokinin. CCK stimulates the emptying of the gallbladder. CCK is produced by the eye cells of the duodenum. The biliary system can have different kinds of pathologies. When there are gallstones in the gallbladder, it's known as cholelithiasis. Lithiasis stands for stones. When the gallstone is at this point, it can potentially obstruct the flow of bile from the gallbladder. Whenever something is stagnant proximal to an obstruction, there is a high chance of developing inflammation. So, this results in cholecystitis, which is the inflammation of the gallbladder. If the gallbladder is inflamed in the absence of a stone, it is known as acalculus cholecystitis. This occurs in severely ill patients. When a stone is at the common bile duct, it's known as cholecolithiasis. Similar to the previous concept, there is a chance of developing inflammation here due to the obstruction. And once there's inflammation, the condition is called cholangitis. Having clarified these four pathologies, let's take a look at a case. A patient presents with jaundice and complains of abdominal pain on the right upper quadrant. The level of direct bilirubin is high. What is the most likely diagnosis? Option A, tumor on the tail of the pancreas. Option B, tumor on the head of the pancreas. Option C, cholecystitis. Option D, Absence of the enzyme responsible for conjugation of bilirubin. We're dealing with two things here, jaundice and abdominal pain. Whenever a patient comes in with jaundice, we should always check if it's caused by direct or indirect bilirubin. When red blood cells break down in the spleen, they produce indirect bilirubin. This is not conjugated and is water-soluble. When this undergoes conjugation, it becomes water-insoluble and is now known as direct bilirubin. The process of conjugation takes place in the liver. Our patient has high levels of direct bilirubin. This means that the conjugation has already taken place. So, we can eliminate the fourth option here. Direct bilirubin levels are usually high whenever there's an obstruction. This is because the direct bilirubin builds up and leaks into the blood. A tumor on the tail of the pancreas will not cause obstruction to the flow of bile, so jaundice is very unlikely. 
Both tumor at the head of the pancreas and cholecholithiasis can obstruct this area and cause jaundice. The key difference is that symptoms of cholecholithiasis would be more acute and will present with pain. Tumor of the head of the pancreas is less likely to present with pain. So the answer to this question is cholecholithiasis. Question number four. Which of the following is not a part of Charcot's triad? Option A, fever. Option B, shock. Option C, jaundice. Option D, right upper quadrant pain. Charcot triad is used to diagnose cholangitis. Since there is inflammation, we're gonna see fever. The biliary system is on the right upper quadrant, so we will also see right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Since there is obstruction, we're also going to see jaundice. This is Charcot triad. Shock can be seen in severe cases when the inflammation starts spreading. Shock would result in decreased perfusion to the brain. That can lead to altered mental status. These five things come together to form Reynolds pentad. So the answer to this question is shock. Question number five. Increased amount of bile salts dash the risk of developing gallstones. Option A increases, option B decreases. Increased cholesterol and bilirubin levels increase the chances of forming gallstones. Bile salts solubilize these two substances and hence decrease the chances of forming gallstones. Question number 6. In people with Crohn's disease affecting the terminal ileum, the risk of developing gallstones is? The answer to this question is higher. From the previous question, we know that bile salts, from the previous question, we know that bile salts reduce the likelihood of forming gallstones. Bile salts are absorbed at the terminal ileum. So, a pathology in the terminal ileum will decrease bile salt absorption and increase the risk of gallstone formation. Question number 7. How does estrogen increase the risk of gallstones? Option A. Gallbladder stasis. Option B. Increased cholesterol. Option C. Conversion to testosterone. Option D. Estrogen decreases the risk of gallstones. Estrogen increases the risk of gallstone formation. This is because it stimulates HMG-CoA reductase. HMG-CoA reductase is involved in the synthesis of cholesterol. Gallbladder stasis does increase the risk of forming gallstones, but estrogen isn't responsible for this. Instead, an increase in progesterone can increase the risk of gallstone formation by causing gallbladder stasis. I hope you guys like this video. If you want me to continue making videos like this, please give it a thumbs up and comment below to show me your support. Thanks for watching.